Hi everybody, I'm Ryan. Worlds just ended and I, I just want to start off by saying congratulations, Nathan Stewart. What an absolute roller coaster you had. Between losing in the last round, wouldn't pan away while you were trying to deal with that emotionally, squeezing in on breakers, and then finally becoming the world champion at 20 years old is absolutely incredible. So cool. Congratulations. That being said, what I wanted to do today was have my five major takeaways from watching Worlds from the comfort of my own home, both as a fan of Magic and as somebody who really tries to take Magic seriously, and frankly, Magic is my life, and from a perspective of a person that very much wants to win at Magic and get to that stage. Now I have some notes here, and I think I'm just going to go in order of the notes I have written down. First off, it seems like the tempo decks kind of dominate standard. While when you play the black mid-range decks, you get to play a lot of the most powerful cards that standard has to offer, it seems like the mono blue and the blue red tempo decks, and you see this from results on Magic Online as well, kind of just dominate those black decks. These black decks in the future and standard are going to have to adapt to these tempo decks, but in my humble opinion, even though all of the top four was, you know, Esper, Esper, Esper Grisis, we have to remember that Worlds is a split format tournament. Which means just because this deck came in first in Standard or this deck came in first in Explorer, it doesn't necessarily mean that that's the end-all be-all in that format. From what I saw during coverage, I saw the Tempo decks absolutely destroying in Standard. And Tempo decks doing very well on Magic Online and in paper events that I've attended. So moving forward, they're going to have to adapt to that because I think the Mono Blue and the Blue Red Tempo decks are the best decks in the format at the moment. Now to touch on Explorer, Explorer feels like Pioneer's little brother. It feels like it's Magic's attempt at trying to be Pioneer, but they don't want to code the cards in a Magic arena. But like the best decks in Explorer are already reasonable Pioneer decks, or at least like slight derivatives of good Pioneer decks. And personally, I kind of dislike the fact that they used Explorer as a proto format. Don't get me wrong. It's better than doing something like Alchemy <laughs> and fully delving into the Hearthstone digital version of Magic. And that just might just be being kind of a boomer as far as Magic goes. But it really felt like they only picked Explorer because it's like the only other reasonable format that we have on Magic Arena. So here we go. Where they would have just picked Pioneer if they had access to all the cards. But it was really cool watching a, a, a pseudo Pioneer tournament without mono green totally dominating and with black red even nerfed a little bit so the, the matches were really cool to watch especially that team or transmogrify but it really did just feel like pioneer's horrible little brother which kind of brings me to a thought about digital pro tours and digital worlds now every time one of these digital <laughs> no we had a bunch of digital pseudo pro tours um and, and in watching this digital worlds every single time i have to uh, reassess and sort of think about the digital age of magic and there's some pros and cons Number one, there's something special about watching people play with real cards. Like, that's the core of the game. That's the gathering part of the game to me. But I, but I personally, in my competitive endeavors, play primarily digital magic. So I get it. I think when you're playing in paper, you really feel that gathering part of magic. And I think it's really special. And I realize the games last longer and people are shuffling, but I like, I enjoy that. I think it's cool. I think it's a special part of magic. However... I will admit that watching competitive magic in digital forms, especially on arena, matches go faster because you don't have to shuffle, don't have to actually play the cards, you know, don't have to figure out what's going on, explain to your opponent what's going on. But also, it's way easier to totally understand what's going on. So digital magic is really cool in that way. Um, I really hope that, you know, as as the pandemic simmers out or at least people are or at least people stop caring about COVID because they're exhausted by it or something, we do return to paper cards and paper pro tours and paper worlds but seeing these digital but seeing these digital tournaments do well and it being kind of better in some ways is a really good proof of concept and maybe mixing them back and forth uh, would be really cool now from a competitive standpoint i I've, I've obviously never been to worlds uh i've played in very few pro tour i've never felt the pressure that the people that played on sunday did however one of the interviews really stuck out to me with Ely cassis where Cedric asked him, what do you plan on doing tonight to prepare for tomorrow, to prepare for the top four? And he said, get some sleep. He says, I've done the preparation. I'm ready for this tournament. 
a few more reps won't make me better in the matchup and won't give me an edge. I'm going to relax and get some sleep and focus up for tomorrow because that's the best thing I can do for myself. And that's really incredible. As someone who, you know, <laughs> going right before PTQs, you know, at two o'clock in the morning, making final tweaks to my deck, even though it doesn't actually need those final tweaks, but I really feel like it will give me an edge. Just getting sleep and putting yourself in a situation where you can focus is so important removing distractions being well rested is one of the most important things you can do to prep especially if you've done all the other prep ahead of time and that was kind of eye-opening to me uh, and i've thought about that a lot since ely uh said that i think that's really cool and the fifth takeaway is kind of lame but i need that feeling watching competitive magic watching pro tours watch watching worlds always makes me feel like i i need to get there it makes me double down on being focused on playing competitively, giving myself as many shots as possible, preparing, 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 playing well, staying focused, and really focusing on that grind. And I feel like I need that every few months to put my nose back on the grindstone. And this really did it. I need that feeling at a pro tour. I need that feeling at Worlds. And I promise you, I'm going to get that. If you like this video, these just kind of stream of consciousness takeaways, please be sure to like and subscribe. Check me out on social medias, especially on Twitch. Links are above me, end of the description. Please subscribe. Thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.